<clears throat> Hello, my name is Gavin Simpson and I'm from the University of Regina. Today I'm going to be talking about estimating the time varying correlation between time series using copula distributional models. Correlation is a really intuitive way about thinking of dependence between pairs of random variables. It's one of the first things we either teach or learn on applied statistics courses. I'm going to be using a bivariate copula distributional GAM to estimate how that co correlation between a pair of time series has changed over time. This seems like a bit of a mouthful, so I'm going to break down each bit in turn. It's bivariate. We're thinking very much just here about pairs of time series and the correlation between them. Copulas is the next part. These are functions that represent a joint distribution as a mapping from the cumulative distribution functions of the marginals. It defines a very general way to think about dependence between random variables that don't necessarily have to be continuous. And because of this, because we can do dependencies in counts and binary data, for example, we're starting to see these things used much more widely in ecology. Um, and here are just two examples, one a nice paper by Gordana Popovich and colleagues in 2018, and then a paper last year by Marty Anderson. The next part of our model is the distributional regression part. Complex data often can't be modelled as conditional means plus a mean variance relationship as we would have in a GLM. Distributional regression models have linear predictors for all of the parameters of the conditional distribution. If there are k parameters, we have k linear predictors. In the case of a Gaussian response where we have a mean parameter mu and a standard deviation parameter sigma, then we can have two linear predictors. These linear predictors might be modelled with link functions just as the same way of a GLM. The last part of our model is the GAM. Here we have a basis expansion of our covariates uh, and then we estimate um, parameters for those basis functions to maximize the penalized log likelihood where we're balancing fit with the wiggliness or the complexity of our model. If we combine them all, we get our bivariate copula distributional GAM. The example I'm going to use is from Lake 227. It's a sedimentary record of algal pigments that reflect the standing crop of phytoplankton in the lake. Chlorophyll A tracks the planktonic sources, while beta carotene tracks the planktonic and benthic sources. Both of these have tended to increase over time, but we're interested in knowing how these two things are correlated, because that might suggest changes in the relative sources from planktonic and benthic. We're going to model these using a Gaussian copula with gamma univariate marginal responses, gamma because these are positive continuous variables. So we have our copula function C, a Gaussian copula, with a parameter theta, and theta is going to measure the dependency. In our linear predictors for the means, we're going to have smooth functions of time, as in the linear predictor for theta, the dependency, but we're only going to have intercept or constant terms for the standard deviations. Well, this is fitted with the JGRM function from the package of the same name. Um, and this paper here by Jean-Pierre Amaro and colleagues uh, explains how this works. So this is our fitted trend, our mean in chlorophyll A and beta carotene. Generally increase overall, although it, we do capture this flattening off in terms of beta carotene over time. And then this is our estimate of theta, but it's been transformed into Kendall's tau, a more um, general me measure of dependence. And we can see that although it has varied a lot over time, um, in the recent period that we were most interested in, we see a switch from positive correlation to negative correlation after 1980, suggesting that when we have, uh, we're tending to have higher values of, when we have high values of chlorophyll A, we tend to get low values of beta carotene and so on, suggesting that now we've got a switch where we have, rather than them both be high, we have high chlorophyll and low beta carotene, suggesting an increase in the phytoplankton source. I'd like to thank NSERC and FGSR for funding and thank you for your attention.